Can you find any differences between the above discussed situations? Yes, there are some interesting differences in the two situations. In the first case, variation was naturally advantage which gave survival advantage. In this situation, natural selection is exerted by the crows. The more red beetles were eaten by crows eventually lead to increased population of green beetles. Thus natural selection has directed evolution in the beetle population. This results in adaptation to the environment in the beetle population. But in the second case, the color change gave no survival advantage. Just the accidental survival of one colored beetle changed the common characteristic of the resultant beetles. Accidental survival of beetles changed the frequency of some genes in them. This is the indication of genetic drift which provides diversity without any adaptations. Now let us consider third situation. In this situation, as beetle population increases, the plants suffer from disease which leads to reduced nourishment to beetles. This leads to decrease in weight of beetles but no genetic change. Now let us discuss difference between acquired and inherited traits. As we learned earlier, germ cells of sexually reproducing organisms are made in specialized reproductive tissue. As we discuss in the third situation, because of decrease in weight of the beetles, there will be no change in the DNA of germ cells. Since low weight is not a trait, it is not inherited over generations. Any changes in the non-reproductive tissue cannot inherit to its progeny. For example, let us take a group of mice. If tails of the mice are surgically removed, then no progeny of mice will be tailless. As we all know, the progeny will be with tails as removing of tail is not genetically change of DNA to be inherited to its progeny. Charles Robert Darwin 1809-1882 Charles Darwin set out on a voyage when he was 22 years old. The five-year voyage took him to South America and the islands of its coast. He conducted various experiments that led him to formulate his hypothesis that evolution took place due to natural selection. One of the studies he conducted was to do with the role of earthworms in soil fertility. This is the reason why the ideas of heredity and genetics that we have discussed earlier are so essential for understanding evolution. Origin of life on earth Darwin's theory of evolution explained how life evolved from simple to more complex forms. Mendel's experiments explain the mechanism for the inheritance of traits from one generation to the next. But neither of them explain how life began on earth in the first place. A British scientist, J.B.S. Haldane, who became a citizen of India later, suggested that life must have developed from simple inorganic molecules which were present on earth soon after it was formed. How did these organic molecules arise? An answer was suggested by the experiment conducted by Stanley L. Miller and Harold C. Urey in 1953. They assembled an atmosphere similar to that thought to exist on early earth. This had molecules like ammonia, methane and hydrogen sulfide but no oxygen over water. This was maintained at a temperature just below 100 degrees centigrade and sparks were passed through the mixture of gases to stimulate lightning. At the end of a week, 15% of the carbon from methane had been converted to simple compounds of carbon including amino acids which make up protein molecules.